Hello, welcome back. We're taking a look at insanity today, and we have the invitation from our inner teacher to be sane rather than insane. So let's not be insane. We've moved on to chapter six of the text here, and chapter six is entitled Lessons of Love. The introduction has some very, very fundamental and important things to tell us here in our journey. And it's very important that if you take nothing else away from our conversation today, it's that when we accept insane premises for organizing our thought, for organizing our world, when we accept an insane world view, if you want to call it a world view, what happens but insane results? We draw insane conclusions and we get an insane experience from our insane bases. It follows quite naturally, and this is what passes for life here in the world. And this course is, in fact, a course in mind training, the purpose of which is to release us from fear and to help us to rearrange our perception, to clarify our perception. We don't see things here in the world the way they are. Clarifying perception is seeing them as they are. Not as we would have them be in our mad, psychotic, psychotic, insane, chaotic wanderings. Now, it's at times like these where people on the path will be tempted to say, and in fact, you may say, well, my life's pretty good. It's not psychotic. It's not chaotic. It's really nice. I'm really comfortable. I'm in a beautiful relationship. I've got plenty of cool things to eat and drink, and I'm not lacking for any material comfort, things like that. Okay, no problem. No problem. Are you fully, rapturously joyous all of the time? Do you experience nothing but the peace of God? All right. So when you answer that, well, no, I have moments, I have a neighbor or I have a client or a colleague at work that really annoys me and the other political party here annoys me. How could they possibly have passed the bills that they've passed? How could they possibly believe the way they do? How could people on my social media feed possibly have written the hateful crap that they wrote? But are you constantly 100% all the time fully joyful and experiencing only the peace of God? And when you answer, well, no, it's because we've accepted insane premises. Our thought system here in the world is completely backwards. It is 180 degrees different from the thought system that the Holy Spirit is teaching us, that Jesus is showing us here with this course that your inner teacher wants you to adopt. Now, that's the call. Listen to the voice for God. Listen to your inner teacher. Question for each and every one of us. Only you can answer it. Honestly, are you listening? Are, are you listening? The call goes out to all of us all the time. So we'll pay specific attention here in the next few minutes to this course as a thought system. 
Now, what we see here in the introduction uh, is just the first two paragraphs under the heading of introduction to chapter six of the text is that anger is a projection of separation. It's a projection of guilt, a projection of fear that we can't handle. It feels badly. It feels icky and we want to get it away from ourselves as far away as possible. So we shift it off onto other people or other things. We shift it off onto the world itself. We shift it to space, to time. We shift it to the opposing political party, right? We shift it to the people on social media that are spouting hate because simply they have a platform to do so. And they can. They could just as easily spout love and share the Holy Spirit with all of us, but they're not listening to the call at the moment. Mm, opportunity for forgiveness for us, isn't it? Anger is our projection of this separation, and it is 100% our responsibility. We're responsible for our own thoughts, our own actions, and we're certainly responsible for what appears to come out of our mouths or that we type into a chat box or onto a post on social media. We're responsible for it. Truly. What Buddy said. So this is a test of Zoom's noise cancellation right here because he's going nuts. He likes to bark at the neighbors when they walk out of their front door and get in their car <laughs> to go somewhere. Yeah, that's Buddy, everybody. Live from Arizona, the dog. Now, if the noise cancellation wiped him out, fantastic. But that was pretty loud. And it was just right over here. <laughs> so we're looking at the fact that everything is our responsibility. What we think is our responsibility. It is. Spirituality, as I'm very fond of saying, I say this all the time, it's an adult endeavor. It is. It's for grown-ups. And so much of it is about taking this responsibility. And the beautiful thing is having chosen wrongly in the past, we can choose yet again in the present moment. We can choose the thought system of the Holy Spirit. We can choose to listen to our inner teacher instead of the ego. The ego is not our inner teacher. The ego is nothing. Simple mistake to be set aside. Nothing gone unless we cling to it. So let's talk a little bit more about a thought system. This course is a course in mind training. So when we experience anger, there are some irrational premises and, and conclusions that we draw. First of all, we feel that somebody on social media or our brother has attacked us. We feel attacked. Therefore, we feel that retaliation is justified, that anger is justified in return, and that we should lash out and attack. We should defend ourselves. Somebody said something that we don't agree with on Facebook, so we should chirp back. Then we also believe completely insanely, erroneously, that we're not responsible for the anger. Oh, but we are. We are. We believe it's someone else's fault, so we lash out, and we wish to punish them. Insane conclusions, right? It's an insane premise, which leads to an insane experience of defining and defending personal territory, feeling that we're always under some form of attack, may or may not be a physical attack, it might be a verbal attack, and it might be just an attack on social media of ideas and political platforms and just views that people hold that are different from our own. 
happens all the time. All you have to do is turn on your onboard computer, which we call a phone, and start scrolling. Yeah. The dirt comes up pretty quickly, doesn't it? So when we accept that we're an ego, that we're an individual, we're always defining ourselves, starting with this illusion right here, going on to label ourselves as an ethnic group, as a citizen of a certain country, we'll label ourselves in the sinus categorizations based on what we do for work, how old we are, how tall we are, how much we weigh, all of those things. So the irrational, insane thought system of the ego, of the world, just keeps us spinning. It keeps us always thinking that our neighbor is going to get us, so we'll waste the present moment constructing an elaborate defense for events that may never come to pass. How often do we do this? All the time. Daily, really. Every day, every day. This passes for life here in the world where we feel like everything is someone else's fault. It's the government's fault. No, it's not. Why? Because the government is not outside your mind. Your brother is not outside your mind. The world, the so-called universe, galaxies, solar systems, are not outside your mind. There is no one out there, so to speak. So, here come the sane conclusions. There is no one out there. You cannot be attacked. There is no other, no separate other. You cannot be attacked. And attack, therefore, has no justification. None. And we're responsible for what we think, for what we believe. You cannot be attacked, therefore attack is not justified, and you're responsible for what you believe. Now, if you find yourself thinking, oh, great, well, that's not a very sunny and pleasant message. Actually, of course it is. Every message from your inner teacher is sunny and pleasant. If it's not, it's not your inner teacher speaking to you. If you ever feel that you're confused about the ideas that are coming into your mind that appear to come from nowhere, this voice in your head, if, if that's what you hear, right? Sometimes it's just the form of an idea or something that we see that reminds us of something. Our inner teacher communicates with, a, with us in, in many, many, many different ways. How that looks actually varies according to each communication, much less to each person here in the world who experiences and hears things, experiences, intuits the guidance of our inner teacher in what appear to be different forms. The content's the same. The content's exactly the same. We are responsible for what we believe, for what we say and think. It's very powerful, and I invite you to see it as an invitation to reclaim this power right now in the present moment. And so what if you've had an ego-clinging day or decade or lifetime so far up to this point? It's the past, and what is the past but gone? There's no point in our assuming that the future is going to be just like the past, 
future's not here either. We have only the present moment. Now, this is very easy for us to understand on an intellectual level. Of course, the past is gone, right? And of course, the future is not yet here. So why then do we live our lives as though we do not believe that? Valuable question. From insane premises, separation, come insane conclusions and an insane experience. From a sane thought system, there is no separation of any kind. Come a sane experience. We're switching gears here, so to speak. We're switching thought systems from the thought system of the ego to the thought system of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus tells us here in paragraph two of the introduction that he is our model for learning and he has given us an extreme example, i.e. the crucifixion, which we'll talk more about next time. He's given us this extreme example, which is highly effective as a learning device. Now, preview, if, if you have not read ahead to this very next section of the text, which is entitled The Message of the Crucifixion, right? If you haven't read ahead, you can imagine that this course recasts this event in a way that's very different than what is commonly believed out there in society. So let's just preview that. Spoiler alert. He's our model for learning. And he's given us an extreme example that, by the way, we do not have to go through. He tells us here that everyone is teaching all of the time. And what do we teach? Well, we teach the thought system that we adhere to. If you adhere to the thought system of the ego, you teach separation, defining and defending personal territory and attack. Retaliation, revenge, preemptive strikes. If instead you teach the thought system of the Holy Spirit, you teach love, union, oneness, joy, limitlessness, peace. We're all teaching all the time, whether we turn on a camera and microphone or not. You don't have to do that. We're always teaching. We're demonstrating the thought system that we adhere to. These thought systems organize our life. And our adherence to one or the other is a form of faith, isn't it? Which can be redirected. We can always choose right now in the present moment the thought system of the Holy Spirit instead of the ego. God instead of the ego. Love instead of fear. However you characterize it, light instead of dark, truth instead of illusion, self with a capital S instead of self with a lower case S, i.e. the ego self. It makes absolutely no difference the words that you use. The decision is still the same. And when do we make that? But right now. We don't make it five minutes from now. And we may not have made it five minutes ago either. But again, we have only the present moment. So the call includes an invitation at all times to choose. Once again, choose the strength of Christ. Choose love. Choose God. Choose the thought system of the Holy Spirit. Our mental focus, our mind can be redirected. And if you find that you need help 
who better than your inner teacher to ask for help, for guidance in redirecting your mind, in choosing love? Our allegiance to the thought system of the ego can be redirected. Now, when will you decide to redirect it? Well, it's actually up to you. You're invited to do it right now, but there may be some delay. The ego wants to do anything but have us renounce it. <laughs> and if we're going to renounce it, it wants us to clobber it, to kick it in the face, like those t-shirts that say, kick fear in the face. Well, you don't actually need to do that. That only makes the ego real. It makes an opponent out of something where there is no opponent. You have no opponent. Remember, attack is never justified. Why? You cannot be attacked. There is no separate other who is going to attack you. Now, here in the world, it might be that someone comes after you physically. Well, you can get away. And you should get away. Right? Nobody's saying, oh yeah, just sit there and take it. That's not what we're saying here. This, remember, is a course in mind training. And accepting an insane premise leads to an insane experience. It is fully, 100% possible, I'm doing it right now, to interact in the world to pay your bills, to step aside if someone tries to hit you, right? The best way to avoid a punch is not to be there. Duck. Yeah. It's important that we continue to live what looks like a normal life. Yet we know that it's illusion. It's a dream. It is 100% possible to function in the dream, doing normal things like work, like eating, drinking water, sleeping, keeping the communication mechanism as healthy as possible. Why? To reach your brother. There are people out there that you can reach better than anyone else. You're teaching your sharing the Holy Spirit with somebody is going to be much more effective than my sharing the Holy Spirit with that particular person. There appear to be 8 billion of us, after all. There are people out there that only you will be able to truly reach. So it's important that we reach them, that we learn to see the physical body as simply a communication device for our inner teacher, for the Holy Spirit. Very important indeed. Because we're always teaching. So do we want to continue to spread insanity or do we truly want to teach love? Do we want to share the Holy Spirit with our brother? And when we do, we keep it in our mind. We recognize what we already have. There is no separation of any kind. Ever, never has been, never will be, and there is certainly not right now. So, this is the thought system that we're encouraged to adopt. Let the thought system of the Holy Spirit form the basis for your entire worldview, and you will certainly see it differently. And at some point, you will certainly begin to have a different experience of it, and it may be right away. But understand that you can't be on the fence about it. We either accept one thought system or the other. We don't accept the thought system of the ego or the Holy Spirit partially. It's actually all or nothing. So we're invited to switch. 
And you can make that switch right now, today. All right, so thank you as always for tuning in. The subscription arrow is right here. That's the red arrow. Go ahead and click on that if you've not joined us. And I really appreciate all of you who have recently subscribed. There have been a number of you. Comments and questions are always welcome, more than welcome. So if you've got them, please leave them here and I will see them and reply to them. So thank you very much for joining me. Have a great rest of your day or evening, and I will see you again soon.